Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a video for you. It's my What I Read in June video. And I'm very excited to be doing this because June, at least reading-wise, was a fantastic month for me. I ended up reading 28 books and the vast majority of them were either 4 or 5 stars, which is awesome. I'm not necessarily somebody who's super stingy with my 5 star rating. I tend to be sort of a middle-of-the-road reviewer, so the fact that I just kind of lucked out and got a lot of really awesome, high-quality books to read was just awesome. And I do apologize that this video is getting uploaded kind of late. I usually try to have these videos come out earlier in the month, but my grandmother unfortunately passed away on Sunday, early Sunday morning. I was able to see her one last time, but it was, it was kind of challenging, and I wanted to be there for my family and just to kind of take care of myself, and I hadn't really been up to uploading a video and working on a video at all you know, the last few days, but I'm feeling up to it now, and... I want to get this video out to you guys because there's some awesome books I want to talk about. So, let's get into it. I'm going to do this just like I did in my last vid couple videos of my What I Read series. And I'm going to just do the star rating from worst to best. And then after that, then go into the books. Some of the books I like specifically want to do like a mini review on or talk about. So, anyway, let's get to it. So, thankfully there's only one one star read this month, and that was Strange Truth by Maggie Thrush. And then there were two two-star books, Peter Darling by Austin Chant, and Internment by Samira Ahmed. All three of them I read via Kindle, and so, again, I'm not hating on ebooks, it's just, it's very coincidental that the ebooks that I read were the lowest rated. But let's get into the physical books. Bent Heavens by Daniel Krauss. 3 out of 5 stars. The Changeling by Victor Lavalle. 3.75 out of 5 stars. The Montauk Monster by Hunter Shea. 4 stars. Flicker by Theodore Rozak. 4 stars. Gateways to Abomination by Matthew Bartlett. 4 stars. The three Jinji Ito graphic novel short story collections. All of them were 4 out of 5 stars because I averaged the stories together, and that's kind of how they turned out. I have a favorite collection, and I'll tell you that later. Scavenger Hunt by Michael Brent Collings. Four out of five, sir. The Siberian Incident by Greg Beck. 4.25 stars. Remains by Andrew Cole. 4.25 stars. Here Lies Daniel Tate by Kristen Terrell. 4.5 out of five stars. Coyote Songs by Gabino Iglesias, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Ferocious by Jeff Strand, 4.5 out of 5 stars. The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, 5 stars. Ice Massacre by Tiana Warner, 5 stars. This by David Sodegren, 5 stars. White Pines by Gemma Amour, 5 stars. The Pale White by Chad Lutsky, 5 stars. Out Behind the Barn by Chad Lutsky and John Bowden, 5 stars. To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger, 5 stars. Slowly We Rot by Brian Smith, 5 stars. Do McKee by Stephen King, 5 stars. The Listener by Robert McCammon, 5 stars. And last but not least, Devil's Creek by Todd Kiesling, 5 out of 5 stars. Alright, so now that I did the star ratings for all the books, let's get into talking about some of the books themselves. So, first one I want to mention is one that I had several of my subscribers show interest in when I did my book haul a little while ago, when I talked about Flickr by Theodore Rozak. This book, I gave 4 out of 5 stars, and it was very enjoyable. Pretty much you are following a gentleman named Jonathan Gates, he goes by Johnny in the book, and he becomes fascinated with this uh, director who did these very unusual films back in like the late 1920s, 30s, and 40s. He was a German filmmaker who ended up coming to the United States, and then he just mysteriously kind of disappeared after his ship sank, and it's all about Jonathan and he's just trying to learn more about Max Castle and it just goes from there. So with this book, I kind of went into it thinking it was going to be like night, night film. And in a 
weight, it kind of is very lightly like night film. But if you took night film and you had it directed by Umberto Eco, who did uh, Name of the Rose, Folk Cult's Pendulum, and a lot of other books like that that are very, they're very interesting stories, but they're very dense, as in just a lot of information. The writing style is kind of heavy, and there's so much information thrown at you. That's kind of how this book is a bit. In a way, it's almost like a crash course in film, especially of like the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, because interesting enough, the author of this book, is he was a professor. He wrote several other texts about film and counterculture and a bunch of other stuff. And when you read this book, you can tell that the author was a very smart, very brilliant man, but it does make it, there, there's just a lot. Um, it took me a while to get through this book because there are so many films mentioned and a lot of directors mentioned, actors and actresses, and a lot of them were real, but some of them he's invented for this book and I honestly wanted to know what the real films were and what weren't. Some of them are very easy to pick out be like, oh yeah, of course, this is you know, Wizard of Oz. He mentions Wizard of Oz at some point, but then he talks a lot about foreign films and I actually even took a class on foreign films, specifically French films when I was in college, and even I reading this was sort of like, whoa, wait a minute, there's there's so much. So just know that going into the story, um, I feel like it's a very rewarding book at the end. The ending of this, I don't want to give anything away, but the ending is a little out there, but I liked it. It was it was fun. There's some definitely some good payoff. It's just slower paced, and especially for modern audiences, I think it may be a little tricky to get through because there are a lot of revelations that happen because this has to deal with a lot of like secret society stuff and and uh, I would really even say this is more of a mystery thriller than a horror book but it does maybe have some horror elements but really it's more of a, a mystery like this really interesting mystery with some like creepy scenes and it's also kind of funny because at the beginning of the book um, I think the author was intentionally poking fun at some people who are like so oh my film is the most incredible deep thing ever I'm gonna film Venet Venetian blinds for four hours and show weird things in it and we're all gonna talk about it so, so there's a little bit of humor especially at the beginning um, so I do recommend it just kind of be in the mood for it this may be a book I would suggest if you either have some time on your hands because you'll want to devote a bit of time to get through this Maybe if you like to read cozy reads like in the fall or winter, like, you know, I feel like this would probably be a good fall or winter book, or just if you are ready for it, just know the pacing is not going to be like night film or experimental film. Both really good books that have to deal with film that are kind of mystery thriller horror books. Um, this is a little bit different, but I think it's still worth checking out. Okay, so I think my favorite book of the month would be Devil's Creek by Todd Keesling. This book, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, bold claim, I know, I think this is going to be a modern horror classic. I think if enough people go out and buy this book and support the author and just talk about this book and spread the news that this is going to be a hit in the horror community, it was so well done and just blew me away. I was very excited to get to this book. I you know, was eagerly anticipating it because I heard about it from um, another horror fan who had mentioned it, and there's a little bit of hype for me surrounding it, so I pre-ordered it, got sent to me the day it came out, and I just dove right into it, and my gosh, this was just everything I wanted it to be, and more. I was just so absorbed in the story, loved the characters, loved the setting, the story was just really well done. The imagery, mm, yeah, it was just so good. I could gush about this book. I definitely need to do a full-fledged review on it, but, you know, I highly, highly suggest you guys go and check this book out. Whether or not you buy a physical copy or you listen to the audiobook, ebook, however you can get it, definitely put this on the top of your list because this was just so, so well done. I loved the sense of dread in it. There, you know, if you like cosmic horror, there's definitely cosmic horror to this uh, small town horror, 
cults, uh, exploring religion, and th there's just so much to it. And I really liked in this story as well that there is a wide cast of characters, and I was really interested in all of them. Like, somehow this author manages to flesh out even the secondary and tertiary characters. Like, that's hard to do, but he did it. And I, I was just really invested in the story. I really like how there's this badass older lady character. Like, that is really cool. We don't have enough older characters who are just total badasses. I mean, the story opens up, takes place, um, the, the first part of the book takes place in the early 1980s where you follow this group of grandparents who go to rescue their six kids from this cult in the forest by the small town of Stouffer, Kentucky. And so they go to rescue their grandkids and they save six of the kids and they end up being known as the Stouffer Six. And then the community people die and then burns down and then it's just the grandparents and their kids and they raise their grandkids up and then flash forwards to present day and things are starting to happen because the church, which is really, it really truly was a cult by this crazy guy named Jacob Masters who you, it's very clear very early on that there is something very messed up with his church. There's something freaky underground. It's very like Lovecraftian in a way, but it's totally its own unique thing. He doesn't rip off Lovecraft. He does his own awesome cosmic horror twist to this story, but it, yeah, it was very, very good. Highly recommend it. Can't recommend it enough, really. And I will be doing a full-fledged book review on it because this book deserves it. And I would say this, The Listener, and Duma Key, probably my three favorite books of the month if I had to pick three favorites. To mention the three books by Junji Ito. I read all three of these books in a day, just back to back to back, because I feel like I can just plow through graphic novels very quickly. So we have Smashed, Shiver, and Fragments of Horror. So interesting about these books is that I, I, there are stories in each of them that I really loved. So it was hard to determine which collection I liked the most, but I actually would say I think Fragments of Horror had my favorite stories on average in it. Like, I think it had the best selection of stories, personally, for what I'm interested in. But my favorite story of Jinji Ito's work of these three was found in Shiver. There's this one story that I just was really fascinated by where the main character, he keeps going into his dreams for longer and longer and longer. And I just thought that concept was really cool. And then the ending was like, whoa. And I just love Jinji Ito's artwork. But I think my favorite story of all of them was found in this one as a whole. This had, I think, the, the best selection because there were like at least three very memorable stories in this. But Smash was enjoyable as well. In fact, I actually liked the title story, Smashed, which had to do with people eating this kind of jam substance and then getting smashed, and it was just very fun, very entertaining. Um, you know, with all short story collections, whether they're graphic novel or not, I do think that you kind of, there's going to be books that you like and books that, or stories you like that and stories you don't like, so they can be a little uneven, and that's why they're, they're all, to me, all of them end up averaging out to be about four stars. But definitely, definitely worth checking out. He has fantastic artwork and the stories were all, even the stories that were weaker were still really interesting and like some of the artwork was just either just really creepy, macabre, or some of them just really gross. But definitely enjoyed my time with these. Okay, really quick. So my least favorite book of the month was Strange Truth. I don't even want to talk about that book that much because I just don't think it's really worth the time. The cover sucked me in because it reminded me of Twin Peaks. And I love Twin Peaks. It's one of my favorite shows. And I live very close to where Twin Peaks was filmed. It's like practically in my backyard. So, And I love David Lynch's work. So I just was like, ooh, if this is anything like Twin Peaks, this will be great. It was not. 
Um, it's just overall an incredibly weak novel. I could go on and on and on about how awful it was. I should have checked the Goodreads ratings. I did not. And I wish I did because a lot of other people agree with me that it was a very bad book. As a 2.9 rating on Goodreads, that's extremely low. So, and I think it deserves it because, my goodness, there, there are so many issues with the book. Not alone the fact that it handled issues really badly. Um, I mean, sexual assault was just poorly handled. And the minority characters are all the bad villainous characters and it's just extremely obvious and dialogue was awful story was just it just was a hot mess so I don't even want to talk more about it I might do I haven't really done a rant review on a book before if you guys were interested in me just kind of doing a video like that just let me know because I could totally there's so much material for me to talk about that book but just just know it looks like it's maybe a Twin Peaks story because it does involve like disappearance and of uh, you know like there's supposed to be a mystery at the heart of this book but it just failed however another book that I want to talk about that is also a young adult mystery thriller that worked really well was Here Lies Daniel Tate this one was very enjoyable pleasantly surprised I had no expectations going into this book I hadn't really heard anything about it but it was really well done essentially we are following this character he is an unreliable narrator. You don't actually know what his real name is. He goes by Daniel Tate because that's the name he takes on because he cons his way into this family, this American family, he's Canadian, and he cons his way into this American family after he's been homeless for several years and due to some circumstances he, he doesn't want to end up back on the streets or stuck at like a psychiatric ward there's like a bunch of stuff happening and so he ends up pretending to be this kid named Daniel Tate who disappeared when he was 10 years old and now Daniel is supposed to be like 16 17 years old the character um, the narrator is a little bit older than that but he looks very similar to Daniel so he just cons his way in but once he gets taken in by this family he realizes that there's something up something very wrong Everyone seems to just be super excited to see him and things are too easy and then there's like, you know, tension in the family and then he has to solve the mystery of what's going on while still trying to pretend to be Daniel Tate and figure out what happened to the real Daniel Tate. So, very interesting book. Really enjoyed it. Only reason why I knocked off half a star is because there's a completely unnecessary romance in it. And I'm not anti-romance, but I think it should either add to the story, not detract from the story, or there should be kind of a purpose to it. And it just seemed just put there for no reason, and that could have been time used for something else. So, other than that, I thought it was really well done, and highly recommend it. So it was really nice to, even though I read a really awful young adult thriller, to then read a pretty good adult uh, young adult thriller. Alright, so, Bent Heavens. This book is a three star. A three star isn't necessarily a bad rating. Like, for me, if something gets a three star, it's still probably worth at least checking out. Like, one or two star books, if somebody rates them and I have no interest in reading the book, then I'll usually skip them. But, like, a three star intrigues me enough to check it out. And this one was interesting. There are parts of it I really liked. One being, this was a dark story for a young adult book. I wasn't expecting that and I thought that was really cool. It went some places that were kind of pushing the limit on young adult fiction and I liked that there there were aliens and there was no romance going on with the aliens because it seems like in young adult fiction a lot of the alien books that came out especially like several years ago they were all like oh hot aliens we're gonna sleep with the hot aliens there's lots of drama with the hot aliens. Now the aliens in this are like legit freaky aliens. So this was awesome because I I think there needs to be more alien fiction, especially in the young adult market. Like, I mean, I was a big fan of the X-Files growing up and anything that reminds me of X-Files and like creepy alien stuff was just totally something I would just eat up. So I liked that this was unique and I did get into the story, 
but there are a couple issues with it. Um, one being the fact that this is a short book, but I swear nothing really happens for like half of the book. Um, which is fine. I'm all about character development, but I do feel like there was a lot of like teen drama stuff going on that I felt like didn't really add to the story, except for I did appreciate the take on bullying and kind of addressing the bullying and some of the issues with the main character, Liv. She's kind of messed up after her father had disappeared and she's got a lot going on. So like it was really interesting to see that aspect, but I still felt like the book either should have gotten off to a quicker start or it should have just been longer. And it also took a twist in this book that I think readers are either going to love or hate. I thought it was just kind of interesting. I still hadn't really decided if I liked the way it went or not. Um, it's, it's just interesting. I do like that there's like some conspiracies going on in here and I just ate that up and you know, I overall thought it was like an enjoyable read. I don't know if I would reread it again though. And it certainly had its issues and it's definitely not my favorite Daniel Krauss book. That's still gonna be Rotters and that has a you know very dark story at its heart, but it just it was a stronger book in my opinion. I think that this this book probably need a little more to the story and you know it has issues, but it's it's still fun, especially if you do like your aliens. There are definitely aliens in this, and you should go check it out. I'm only going to briefly talk about Duma Key because I did talk about it in my summer horror recommendations, which you can go check out. I'll link down below if you haven't seen that one. I can't believe it took me forever to read this book, but I'm so glad I did because it was so wonderfully done, just really beautifully written, and the story was very compelling. There's a wonderful, fantastic friendship in this book between um, Edgar Fremantle and Wireman, Jerome Wireman. I really liked their friendship, and there were a lot of like really unique elements to the story. It's Stephen King, and you can definitely tell it's a Stephen King book, but he does some, some things a little differently in this book. And I also think he really brought a personal touch to this, because Edgar Fremantle, the main, uh, uh, main character, he went through this awful experience um, when he was injured on the job. He lost his arm, had to do a lot of rehabilitation, and there was a lot of pain and suffering, and this was written after Stephen King had, you know, it, it was like 10 years, I think, after his accident when he got hit by the van, but I still feel like he was really able to pull from his experience of that and put it into this book, and you could just really feel it, and, and that was really neat, and, you know, I liked the art, talking about the art in this and the setting. It's really neat to have a beach setting, and a, you know, sort of a tropical setting. Loved it. It was very well done and heartbreaking. So heartbreaking at times. There's just, yeah, it's definitely a story that's going to stick with me. I have bumped this up for sure on my list of favorite Stephen King books because it definitely deserves, honestly, I think this is probably in my top 10 favorite Stephen King books if I you know, at some point I may redo my Stephen King video because I definitely need to put this on there. I was very impressed and of the three Stephen King books that I've read this year, this is definitely my favorite one. It's just very well done. All right, next up we have The Listener by Robert McCammon. This one was just very enjoyable to read. I haven't read a new Robert McCammon book in a while because I've read the vast majority of his work and I reread them a lot because Robert McCammon is the author of several of my favorite books of all time. And it was just really neat to get back into McCammon's story because he is a master storyteller. I love the way he writes, I love the way he does characters and his stories, his plots, his writing, just everything comes together so well and his stories are often complex but easy to follow. Like there's, there's a lot of depth to them and they're oftentimes cross genre so they aren't just one specific easy to categorize story. There's usually, you know, thriller elements, crime elements, sci-fi elements, horror elements, magical realism elements, fantasy. There's there's a lot to his stories and this one is also just gonna go up there as a top McCammon book for me. Definitely in the top ten. 
Probably not in the top five, but still, five out of five star, very solid. This one follows a, basically it takes place in the South in 1934. You have Curtis Mayhew, he is a, you know, I think he's about 20 years old, he's African American, and he works as a red cap, so he shuffles luggage and does a bunch of stuff at the train station down in New Orleans. And he has the gift to listen to other people who have a gift of, it's kind of like a form of telekinesis and telepathy, where he can connect with people who are on the same wavelength, in a way. And he has to help the daughter of this very rich man who owns like a shipping company and he's just extremely wealthy. He has his two kids, the daughter and Curtis have to connect and save the kids from this kidnapping by these two con artists. You have a woman named Ginger LaFrance and then you have a gentleman who goes by several different names um, like James, Jonathan, and like Jack Parr, partner. There's like a bunch of different names he goes by. In the story he is often referred to as Pearly, that's his nickname, and they are like pretty messed up con artists. I will say in like the first chapter of this book there is some violence against some puppies and a dog that shows you how awful Pearly is as a person. Um, he just takes revenge out on somebody and so I just wanted to point that out there for animal lovers but the rest of the story is just it really is a very suspenseful book especially like the last like 60 pages or so are very suspenseful you're you know practically biting your nails figuring out what's gonna happen because you don't really know how the story is gonna end it's just very well done very thrilling and I loved the you know the dynamic between Curtis and the little girl named Nilla and there's just so much about this that's a really enjoyable story. It's historical fiction, I don't tend to read a whole lot of historical fiction, but this was definitely very enjoyable and one of my favorites of the month and probably be a favorite of the year of the month. It's To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger. I already talked about this in my video from a couple weeks ago where I talk about my sort of hit my reading goal, what were some of my favorite books. This is a novella and I think this is a contender for being my favorite novella of all time. I adored it. It is messed up in a great way. I love things to be very dark if they're supposed to be dark and yeah, this was just so good. Pretty much we're following a character named Andy and her descent into madness and wanting to consume carrion and being just absolutely fascinated with vultures. It's incredibly well done beautifully written. The author, she writes poetry and you can just tell like this, I already have read it a second time at this point and it's, it was just so good and it, it, I, a lot of times with novellas I either find them to be a little too short or like the, the length is a little awkward sometimes. Not with this one. It was just perfectly, perfectly done. Solid five out of five stars. I cannot wait to check out more of Sarah Tantlinger's work. In fact, I am probably going to be ordering her poetry collection, which is based off of H. H. Holmes, very soon. Highly recommend giving this a chance if you're looking for a very good novella. It's, it's just really, really solid. Another book, five out of five star book that also has to do with some like cult horror. But it's different than Devil's Creek. I wouldn't really compare the two because the stories are very different. This one has to do with a woman returning to her roots in Scotland in this very small town and finding out that her grandma was an important figure in her town but that there's something very creepy going on, especially in this island that is kind of a few miles off the coast of where like her grandma's cottage is after her grandma passed away she inherited it and the townspeople are sort of mysterious and kind of prickly and not very friendly and it's all about her figuring out the secrets and why she's experiencing what she's experiencing very well done the imagery stuck with me 
Gemma Award painted a really solid picture of just everything occurring was just very dreamlike at times and just there's some really creepy images like there's one in particular that took place on a beach where there are like bodies underneath it and the way she described it was just really really creepy and well done so I highly recommend you check this out especially if you liked Dear Laura she has that same power in Dear Laura and just puts it in this book I will say it's a little weird um, so it may not be for everybody like Devil's Creek I think every person who likes horror should go check out this one is I would say a little bit I mean they're both weird fiction but this one just it's a little bit different I feel like there's more of like a dreamlike quality and a little bit more sort of things happening that are just a little out there I would say so it's up to you what you are interested in but I liked this one a lot and definitely do recommend it. Remains by Andrew Cole. I'm not going to talk too long about this one. This one is a haunted house story with a twist. Uh, you follow a woman who has lost her son in a very violent and traumatic way. She spent some time in a mental hospital but then discharges herself and then ends up buying the house where her son had died in and is trying to contact him. And it's a very, very beautifully written book. The writing in this is gorgeous, very quotable. If I annotated books, there this would be covered in sticky notes. And it's a very heavy, sad book. Very much so. And you can just feel the grief. And I think you have to be kind of in the mood for a story like this because it is just sad. That's that's all I can really say is just it's a very sad heavy emotional book reason why I docked a little bit off of it and didn't give it a full five star even though I think it is very well done and this is I believe the author's debut novel or only like his second book um, and I, the writing was just gorgeous um, was it's a little uneven with the pacing like there would be a few things that would happen and then it just kind of seemed to slow and not in a, the way I like um, so I think that it could have been tightened a little bit um, and then there are like a couple things that sort of I didn't think were quite fully explained properly but other than that I thought it was great very haunting and extremely creepy Woof, there's this one there, there's several scenes that take place in the dark where I just I got creeped out and I don't tend to really get creeped out as much by stuff anymore just because I read so much horror and see so much on you know horror movies and stuff but this one definitely got to me there are a couple couple chapters in particular that were just very eerie so I do recommend checking this out and I'll probably be revisiting this book again and maybe upon another reread I'll pick up on some more things and maybe the rating might go up you know we'll see. Ferocious! I want to talk about this book really quick because this one I rated it pretty high. I know what this book is. It's an entertaining book and that's how I rated it as. This is pretty much about a man and his niece and they just battle a bunch of zombie critters in the forest and that's the story. And I really enjoyed it because I was reading this book when I was sort of not feeling great about some stuff and I just wanted like some mindless escapist fiction that was just kind of funny and you know I always love horror it's in a way kind of a comfort read for me because it's my favorite genre and there's something about it that makes me feel better than a lot of other genres um, and it served its purpose I was very entertained I liked the dynamic between the uncle and the niece and you know, if you like lots of zombie action and just there were some very funny moments like I swear Jeff Strand is very he has humor in all of his books I think his most serious book would probably be Dweller which I do really like that book a lot I think that actually is my favorite Jeff Strand book even if it's a more serious one but his books all have some sort of humor to it and this one in particular there are a few chapters where I was like oh this is hilarious um, so the book doesn't take itself seriously and it's just 
very enjoyable, very consumable. If you like your creature feature, if you like zombies, you know, zombie animals, then you'll like this. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Okay, next book is Dead Girl Blues by David Sodergren. So, this one was really well done. It won't, it still isn't going to top The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren because that one is just hard to top. It was just really well done, very solid story. But this was very enjoyable too. And I really liked that it is pretty much an homage to Giallo films, which are these Italian films that came out, especially like in this, I think they were really popular like in the 70s. Um, like if you've ever seen a Dario Argento film, I think he's probably one of the more famous giallo directors, but there's some others as well. And they had to do with a lot of like mystery and crime, horror. There's also a lot of like usually sexual content. So these were kind of like edgy films at the time. And they were based off of these Italian like mystery thriller novels and they were called giallo because they were they had yellow covers and giallo is yellow in Italian and I apologize if I'm butchering the pronunciation I should have looked it up before I made this video but I thought this was awesome and it is extremely fast-paced you just are chucked into the story and it doesn't slow the entire time and the main character is a bisexual woman, which is really cool. Like, David Sodergren really likes having representation in his books, and I think that's really awesome that he does that. And pretty much you are following a woman who is a stripper, and she's on her way to work one night, and she encounters a woman who has been stabbed multiple times, and just this woman dies in her arms. Before she dies, the woman slid a phone into our main character's purse, and she ends up discovering the phone later and sees that there's a snuff film on there and then she is just thrust into this underground world of trying to solve what happened and it gets pretty intense very quickly. There's a lot of deaths in this and it really does feel like, because I've seen a lot of giallo films in my day because I've watched tons and tons of horror movies and it really the entire time this book feels like you are watching a giallo film because there's a lot of like, you know, risque stuff and thriller stuff and violence and like the ending was perfect like this is it, it just it ends like a giallo film would end and it was awesome so highly recommend it you know whether or not you like giallo films it's it's up to you but like the the story holds up on its own even if you aren't into giallo films but if you do happen to like those type of films then I think you'll get a little extra out of this story I mean heck just look at that yellow cover this is totally a giallo homage so highly recommend it all right Siberian incident I'm not gonna talk too long about this one this was a very fun book it's not deep or anything like that and had its cheesy moments but I still gave it a 4.25 out of 5 star because like going into it I knew what type of book this was going to be and I pretty much just wanted kind of a a fun entertaining lighthearted you know sci-fi horror film that had aliens and that reminded me of the thing and that's pretty much what this is you follow a gentleman and he is trying to set up a sturgeon farm in Siberia by this very very large lake that has a lot of mysteries behind it like there are lights in the lake a lot of mysterious disappearances and things get rough very quickly in fact there is a Russian crime like mob element in this and that was really interesting and then there's the main character ends up disappearing and then you have his brother come in and then he becomes the new main character and his brother is like this macho ex-military guy and it, it was it was fun it was very entertaining you know there's some some interesting quotes some over-the-top stuff some of the characters it's you know but but it's it's entertaining like I I liked the whole story except for towards the end there were some very convenient saves like some very convenient things that happened and I 
I wish that wasn't the case, like if there had been a little more of a challenge and things resolved a little bit differently, then I still would have given this a 5 out of 5 star book just for purely entertainment value, because that's what I was reading for. I just wanted to be entertained and have some escapist fiction. Wasn't looking for this to be literary quality or anything like that. Um, so I do think it's worth visiting if you are interested in a book like that. This is very fun. Definitely an homage to The Thing without ripping it off. Like the the critters in this are definitely different than The Thing. Like the similar-ish concept but executed differently. And it's just fun when you're reading this book because you can sort of point out a few instances where it's like, oh yeah, that's totally like, you know, again, not a ripoff from the movie. It's its own thing, which I liked, but there's still some like references some very subtle references not anything big but some subtle stuff and you know had a lot of fun and this would be fun to read now or winter as well because this takes place in Siberia in the cold months so very very fun. I'm gonna quickly mention Ice Massacre by Tiana Warner. I read this for Pride Month just like I read Peter Darling for Pride Month. This one is five out of five star and this surprised me. This is uh, one of the books that I kind of went into not knowing what to expect at all, but this was really fun, really well done, and I believe it's young adult fiction, but it doesn't have a lot of the tropes that YA fiction oftentimes does. This one was just very gripping. Lots of action. Uh, pretty much in this book it takes place um, on this country island that's supposed to be, it's fictional, um, but it's supposed to be off of the coast between like British Columbia and Washington. So when I was picturing this story, the island, I was picturing it basically being like a giant San Juan Island. And that was really cool because I'm like, oh, you know, like I was picturing like the the plants and the trees and the water and it just, you know, I, I liked that. Um, and in this story, mermaids and humans are at war with each other. Like the mermaids are killer mermaids. They're referred to as sea demons and they just are killing off humans if they are in the water at all. In fact, they will even invade beaches. So everybody's kind of moved to the center of the island. People are starving and going hungry. Occasionally, Canada and the United States will send over some food, but they aren't very supportive of Ariana Kwai, which is the uh, fictional country. And they've been sending out boys every year, 20 of them, to try and massacre as many mermaids as they can. Very few return. So this year they decide to send girls. So these girls have been training for five years and they're 18 and just ready to take on these mermaids. And they're pretty badass. I really liked that you actually get to see that they're doing cool things and battling these mermaids rather than, you know, sometimes in YA where they're like, oh, we're going to tell you they're badasses, but we're not really going to show you a lot of action. Like, nope, there's plenty of action in this story. And, of course, there is at its heart a relationship developing between our main character Mila and one of the mermaids that she knew as a child and it's very sweet. It doesn't take over the book. In fact I feel like it's a fairly minor component of it but I think I liked that. That's one of the reasons why I liked it and it just worked really well so this was definitely a good choice for Pride Month and I can't wait to read the other two books in the series because this was just really really just entertaining and just good. Very good and I wasn't expecting it to be. I kind of picked it up sort of like, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but it was a very pleasant surprise, and you know, I highly recommend it if you like fantasy, and even if you don't necessarily care about fantasy, I still think you might like it if you want just some fun killer mermaid action and just girls battling these mermaids because they kill a lot of them, like hundreds of them, and they're, they're on the ship, and it's... It's really neat, and also the culture is like loosely inspired by Native American culture. And in fact, the vast majority of the characters in this book are like people of color, which I thought was really neat to have that representation. Um, but it's done well where Ariana Kwai is its own thing, so it's not blatantly ripped off of any Native American culture. It's just like loosely inspired, but very fun. And if you're looking for a good summer read. I think this would be a really entertaining summer read. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I've already mentioned it a couple of times now at this point, but Slowly We Brought, I read this towards the beginning of the month and wow, this was really well done. This is a zombie novel, but it's 
not a super action-packed zombie novel. Like, there's definitely some zombie action, but it really is more focused on the characters, specifically the main character, Noah. And I would definitely say if you are interested in psychology and addiction and seeing a really good depiction of that in a story, this is one of the best depictions I have encountered in fiction in, of somebody who struggles with this. I mean, Slowly Rewrought, even the title, I think, is really referencing the fact that people who have addictions, especially to alcohol, are slowly rotting because it's, a, you know, toxic substance to a lot of people in the quantities that, like, Noah is drinking it in. And it's also slowly rewrought because his psyche is just disintegrating and it definitely is a dark story and at times it is, you know, like, pretty emotional to read, but it's really well done, and I love apocalyptic fiction, and I love zombie fiction, and there's definitely zombie action in this, and then some, you know, survival elements to it, but really, at its heart, it's following this character, and getting to know him, and his suffering, and trying to overcome that, and then just, yeah, there's, there's a lot to this story, even if it's not super plot-heavy, it's just well done, and I highly recommend you check it out if you're looking for something a little bit different. Interment. Interment has the problem of having a very powerful and important concept and themes, but not being executed very well. The main character drove me kind of bonkers because I swear she was like super obsessed with her boyfriend, and there were things that she was doing that... I don't know, the, the survivalist in me was having a hard time accepting that. It's like, I know she's a teenage girl, but I think teenage girls can be very strong, and I don't think she was one of the stronger characters that I've encountered, and I didn't really care much for the writing, and I just feel like, I think it was a debut novel by the author, don't quote me on that, but I think it was, and it reads like a debut novel. There's just like a lot of issues with the story, despite the fact that it brought up important issues. It just, you know, I read stories primarily for the stories and the characters, so if, you know, it, it was unfortunate that these awesome, powerful themes and the great idea and concept didn't quite work. I wish it did, I really do, but it just, for me, it fell flat and, you know, wasn't the worst book I've read for sure and it wasn't the worst book I read this month or this year but it just it had great potential and just didn't hit it and I think unfortunately it was just a wasted opportunity Peter Darling Peter Darling I shouldn't have read that book because I don't really like retellings a whole lot unless they're very dark retellings I'm not a big Peter Pan fan. Like, Peter Pan's fine. And I really like The Child Thief by Brom. That's an awesome Peter Pan retelling. Very dark, very grim. It, it was just everything that I like in a retelling. Um, and this one, it just, it was short. And I, you know, it was cool to have that representation. So pretty much in P Peter Darling, you have Peter Pan who is... Wendy Darling in the real world, but then goes to Neverland and becomes Peter, and he's transgender and has this relationship with Hook, and it gets complicated and there's some stuff, but I just felt like there wasn't enough world building because it was short, and because I'm not really interested in romance, I don't like it to be my A plot. It definitely, if there's romance in it, it has to be B or C plot, and I don't want it to take over and it also th there's just some requirements for me to enjoy a romance and for the most part I don't enjoy it and this book I just I feel bad um I, I just I knew going into it, I probably wasn't going to like it that much but it, it, you know and it came true like my friend wanted to buddy read it with me so I read it and it was for, supposed to be for pride month but it just didn't it just wasn't my thing so that's all I'm gonna say about that and you know if for me, the two books I read for Pride Month, Peter Darling, didn't hit the mark, but Ice Massacre exceeded my expectations, so 
anyway those are the two star books and the one star book novellas that I read this month pale white not behind the barn just fantastic novellas seriously horror novellas are very very entertaining I haven't really been a huge novella fan for most of my life unless they're like Stephen King's novella collections or you know something like that but I've the last like six seven months have read a lot of really fantastic horror novellas and these two are definitely towards the top of my list I would still say To Be Devoured is my number one favorite novella right now but this one was a very close second and then the ending of this one just made it for me I loved the ending on this so much and then the concept of this was really cool okay so thank you so much for watching this video I know I didn't cover all the books that I read this month I just didn't want this video to get too long and kind of want to share the my favorites and my least favorites and then like a couple in the middle so thank you so much for watching and I will be uploading my TBR video most likely tomorrow so stay tuned for that and I hope you guys have a great evening and I will talk to you guys later happy reading bye